Okay, this is a first for me. We're going to be doing our Sunday school lesson on video today. So I've never done that before. You can bear with me while I try and work out the, the bugs and trying to do that. I do have some reading to do, so um, forgive me for the kind of looking around th that I, I typically do. It doesn't work well on camera, and also when I'm reading, I got obviously got to look down and read. Uh, we're continuing our series, uh, I'm Afraid Not. And this is, I don't know, this is like 13 weeks that we're into this series. And this is something that I felt like God really spoke to me, that this was uh, a message for our, the times that we were going to be living in right now. And, of course, nobody knew about coronavirus and all those kinds of things. And even a couple weeks ago when this lesson would have normally taken place, we didn't know we weren't going to be meeting. And, and in fact, I had uh, asked Lisa if she would teach this particular lesson. And she said, you know, absolutely, she would be doing that. I was planning on being in Alturas at the time. And then when we found out we weren't meeting, I actually called her to see if it was okay if I went ahead and taught it because we were planning on meeting. And she said, you know, I, I was praying about it. And I feel like God said, you're not going to teach this. It, you know, Dan should be teaching this one. And so uh, she was quite happy to have me teach it. And then we didn't meet. And we didn't have an opportunity to videotape this uh, last week. So here we go. The lesson title today is Drowning Out Fear. And uh, I think this is something that's going to be really key and important for us. And we're going to try and continue this series in this video mode, uh, provided I don't upset you too bad with, with my uh, video skill here. So, first of all, uh, we all do it. We waver between faith and fear. Between strength and weakness. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but rather he's given us a confidence and a boldness to allow us to walk in love, healing, and ministry to others. So we're going to kind of explore this. And our, and our verse today is found in Exodus. And uh, the Exodus verse we want to look at, chapter 14, verse 13. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you will not see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. So I want to tell you what we've got going on here. The, the, the Egyptian army has now pursued the children of Israel as they've left captivity. We've, we've gone through the plagues and all those things that have taken place. And then if you look at the verse ahead of 13, it says uh, in verse 12, is this not the word that we told you in Egypt? This is the, the children of Israel speaking to Moses. And they said, um, is not the word we told you in Egypt? Is it not, uh, excuse me, saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. In other words, what they're saying is, is it worse yet? Can it get any worse than this? We told you this is what was going to happen. They're, they're really, they're up against it. They're, they're on the, you know, they're trapped next to the sea, and they've got the Egyptians pressing in on them, and everything is going wrong, right? Everything is going wrong. Now everything's going wrong. Well, look at what's going on in our society right now. Everything is going wrong. You know, you, you can't go to work. You can't get paid. You can't pay your bills. You, you, you know, you're not supposed to go out. Everything, you know, the, 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 there's this virus, this thing you can't even see going on. You're not sure what's being uh, politicized for political purposes purely and what's true and what's not. You don't know what's going on, and, and you're just kind of at that point. Everything is now going wrong. The next thing you know, the sink is going to start link, uh, leaking because I hate plumbing, as you know. <laughs> That's next, right? What else? What else could there possibly be? And at this point, when, when everything goes wrong, here's the beauty of everything going wrong. When everything goes wrong, there's nowhere else to turn but God. And it's not that we shouldn't have turned to God in the first place, but we're kind of dense sometimes. And we get to that place where there's just nowhere else to turn but God. You know, it kind of reminds me of the, that line, Abbott and Costello, you know, look at the mess you've gotten us into, right? And, and we kind of get that way with God a little bit. Like, God, what now, God? Why are you picking on me? What did I do? But sometimes it's just things that happen, 
And they, those things can teach us and remind us that we need to pay attention to what God's doing and really rely on God for what we need. They're at that place where they don't know whether to stand still, move forward, or both. And I know that sounds kind of weird. You know, how do you stand still and move forward at the same time? But that's kind of where they're at. They're backed up. They're backed up to the sea. Their backs are against it. Their enemies in front of them. They really don't have any place that they can go. And that's kind of how it feels right now. What now? Well, stay home. You know, you find out you're living with two or three other people and lo and behold, they're actually related to you. You know, one's your spouse and you got a couple of children there that you didn't even know you had because you were so busy living your life doing other things. We're kind of forced into that sit still mode and, and really kind of pay attention to just the importance of, of just living our lives. And we need to pay attention to where we are with God. So that's that's where they're at. And they're saying we, we would have been better off to stay the way we were. We'd have been better off to not even start this journey. But look at Moses' words to them. He, and he said to the people, do not be afraid. That's a choice. You can choose to be afraid or not. Now, in the moment, sometimes it doesn't feel that way. Sometimes in the moment, you know, you think that I'm just reacting and I have no I have no say in the matter. But the truth of the matter is you do have the ability to choose to not be afraid. And it's not one of my better moments, but I, I remember uh, on a hunting trip carrying a deer on my back down off the side of a mountain and my wife was with me and I and I stepped down over a fallen branch on a steep side hill and there was a snake there and I am not good with snakes I they scare the crud out of me and uh, and to make it worse it was a rattlesnake and I really don't like those and so in my attempt to push back up on the hill and get away from the snake, I fell. My foot slipped out from under me and I fell right in the middle of a snake. And I was freaking out. I won't even go into how bad I was freaking out, but I was freaking out. And um, my wife was trying to help me get up from behind by picking up on this pack that I was carrying with the, with the deer. And I was so freaked out. I was trying to get up myself and I actually ended up leaning forward so hard trying to get up that I, I pulled her over the top of me and into the middle of where the snake was. And then I was really freaking out. And she said, calm down. And I, you know, I couldn't. But she said, I'm not moving until you calm down. Well, you have to make a choice sometimes. And the choice I had to make was to calm down. So Moses says, don't be afraid. God says, don't be afraid. This whole series is talking about not being afraid. You have the choice to stop being afraid and start trusting God. You can say, you know, I, I need to get a grip here. That's a choice you make. So that's the first thing he says is don't be afraid. Stand still. We all have that fight or flight syndrome, and fight wasn't really an option. They were going to get obliterated by the Egyptians if they did. They didn't have the heart to fight. They didn't have the heart to stand still. They just had fear. That was all they had. But Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. We have an opportunity right now to stand still and see what God is going to do. And I don't mean stand still as in do nothing, but stand still to stand your ground and trust in God is powerful. And when we can have peace, it's powerful. When we, when we can actually trust God instead of our own wisdom, our own plan, our own whatever, we, we can trust God and know that he's going to work things out. Does it mean we're praying less? No, we should pray more. Does it mean we, we care less? No, we should care more. Does it mean we're cowering in the corner? No, it means we're resting in God. And we can... We can do 
great things when we begin to agree in prayer. Anyway, so he says, he says, um, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. Now, I want you to think about something. They're, here they are pinned against the sea. And Pharaoh had been killing firstborn by drowning them. Their, their future being taken away. That's what your offspring are, aren't they, is your future, the future generation. He'd been taking their future away. And at that moment, with them backed up against the sea, they, they really are kind of confronted with a choice between drowning babies and drowning the future or baptizing their fear. You know, when we baptize our fear, it dies out. That's the idea is it dies out. Take your fear and baptize it. Put it under God's pr uh, spirit. Put it under God's blood. Put it under the salvation. In other words, trust God. Give him your fears. God, I give you my fear because I don't, I don't know what to do with this. I give it to you. And Moses had said, you know, God would, would make a way. He said that, that see the salvation of the Lord and what he'll accomplish for you today. Now, we know from reading the Bible that God opened up the Red Sea for them to walk across, and it says that they walked on dry land. And, and in fact, it says they, they, they walked all night. And um, the, I was doing some reading. I think we all have the kind of the Cecil B. DeMille's version of what the parting of the Red Sea looks like. But I want you to think about how many uh, people were present there with the children of Israel. And it says that they passed through during the night. And someone said for, for them to pass that many people through, the seas would have had to open up so that they could march in rows 5,000 people wide. Why don't you think about that? Uh, just some rough math on that. That's about 25 football fields wide or 7,500 feet wide or one and a half miles wide all night long. This wasn't a little ribbon of water parting across. And my dad worked in construction, and I can tell you th there's a process if you want to start doing work and you're going to open up waters that wide. If you're going to start rolling back the sea and putting in uh, little little dams and, and things to hold the water back and, and do work and then let it dry out and do all this, th that's a process. But God made a way basically instantaneously. Then they just had to choose to walk out into that way, to, to choose God's salvation. They had to stand shoulder to shoulder in trusting in God. Shoulder to shoulder, 5,000 wide. We're, we, you know, we're talking about social distancing right now. And that's important for trying to flatten this curve on this virus. I get all that. But we can stand shoulder to shoulder in Christ, locking our, our faith and our hearts together in prayer, in prayer for one another, in prayer for our loved ones, in prayer for our country. We need God. We don't need fear. We need faith. We need to trust God right now. We can drown our fears. Going forward, they had to choose to move out into the way that God had provided. Going forward sometimes involves pulling up your tent stakes. In other words, it's, it's getting out of your comfort zone. It's a choice. I'm, I'm not going to hang on to what's comfortable. See, that was what they were complaining to Moses about was we'd have been better off if we'd have just stayed in bondage. We'd have been better off if we'd have just kept serving our fears. We'd have been better off if we'd been, you know, giving up our future instead of stepping out of our comfort zone and into faith. That was a choice they had to make. Now, Again, what Moses says to them, 
Do not be afraid. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord, which he shall accomplish for you today. And he goes on and says, and I'm going to come back and hit some of this in just a second. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. We can step out in faith and we can hold our peace. We can stand still and hold our peace. We can walk shoulder to shoulder and hold our peace. See, is your life in peace or pieces? That's really the question. Are you going to live your life in peace? No, I'm not talking about phony baloney and ignoring what's going on and oblivious to the things that are happening. But I'm talking about peace, knowing in your heart that God's got it under control, not using it as an excuse to not engage in what's going on in life, but having rest that God's got this. That whatever it is, I know God has got this. I can I can trust in God. Or you're falling apart, falling to pieces. Because God doesn't want you to fall to pieces. He wants you to fall into his peace. My mom used to have a little thing she kept on her refrigerator. And it talked about, uh, well, what it said was, it's hard to stumble and fall. If you're on your knees. When we're on our knees in prayer, when we're when we're down there asking God and trusting God, you know, we we don't have to be in a panic, just pleading and screaming. Oh, God, oh, God, we can we can go to God and say, God, I I believe you've got this. I believe and I, I ask you to show me what you want me to do. Show me the way you want me to walk in. And, you know, don't be surprised if God doesn't take you out of your comfort zone and and ask you to take his hand and walk with him in this, into the unknown, something that's different. There's maybe nobody, maybe there's a couple, but they would be very old, but there's probably nobody that's in church leadership or government leadership that has ever walked through a time like we're in right now. Because the last time we were sort of in a time like this was 1918 with the Spanish flu. It's uncharted waters. It's uncharted territory. But guess what? For the children of Israel, walking out between two walls of water was uncharted. They hadn't done that before. Nobody had. But I want you to look at something else here. I want to come back to this. He said, For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. And God just really opened that up to me. The Egyptians represented fear and bondage. And he says the Egyptians, speaking specifically about those, the Egyptians you see today, you will see no more forever. Those Egyptians will be gone. Now, who were those Egyptians? Well, Pharaoh and his armies, the ones who had kept them in bondage, the ones who had driven them while they were slaves, the ones who had controlled every aspect of their life. And sometimes when we come out of bondage to something, we have that same reaction that they were having with Moses where they, they feel like, I'd be better to go back to that. I'd be better to, to, to deal with that. At least that's a known. I'd be better to run back to that fear. But, but God has said, I want to deliver you. I want to bring you out. I want to show you a new way. And it's going to be grand and glorious. But you got to stand still. You got to have faith. You got to be at peace. And you got to have trust. And you got to be able to step out between the waters. And that statement, the, the Egyptians that you fear, the ones that you see today, you will see no more. There's a couple aspects to that I want to explore for a minute. One is this. Once they stepped out into that dry land between the waters, God's plan was, was rolling. It was taking place. 
And those Egyptians were not going to be there anymore. So the idea that they could go back was gone. Because Egypt wasn't going to be the same anymore. Their situation was forever changed. See, when God, when God delivers you from something, it's changed forever. Those fears, they're gone forever. And you can, you can stumble and you can struggle and you can say, oh, I don't know if I can let go of those things or I might be better off if I just stuck with the cruddy stuff that I had going on. But it'll never be the same. Because God's going to deliver you from those fears. You will not see those fears again. And here's, here's the other thing. When we learn to trust God in a situation, we can learn to trust God in that situation in the future. In other words, we don't have to fall into the same traps, the same things that trip us up as, uh, that we've maybe fallen in with in the past. We can learn to trust God in that situation. Now, we've talked about in the past, and I just want to come back and touch on this with regard to tithing, and, and, and I don't want to get lost in the whole tithing thing, but if you can't trust God with 10% of your income, how do you trust him with 100%? And what do I mean by that? Well, God asks for 10%, and people struggle. Well, I don't know if I can make it. I don't know if I could do it if I give, I give God 10%. And yet, Right now, with what we're going through, there's people who now, they don't have a job. They've, they're laid off, they're fired, they're wh whatever the case may be. Well, now you're trusting God for 100% of your income. Or you're trusting in something else, in which case you're probably dealing with fear. You're, you're probably not at peace, you're probably in pieces. It's a great exercise when we can trust God with 10%. It helps us learn to trust him for 100%. And honestly, when we learn to overcome those fears, when we learn to trust in God, we can do more than 100%. See, it doesn't have to be money. When we learn to trust God, we can learn to minister to others who maybe are struggling with things that we've gone through. But we, we can talk about our experience. You know, the Bible tells us that we, we overcome uh, with the word of our testimony. And when our testimony is, you know, I've been through this. I know what this looks like. And, and I, can, I can tell you God's faithful. As I said, no one's really been through this before. Th that's alive. So it's uncharted territory for everybody. But along the way, we may have had to trust God for things. We may have had to defeat those fears. We may have had to watch God obliterate our enemy in some of these areas. And those lessons can be very valuable to us now. But there is no way that this is going on without the opportunity for us all to grow. And if, and if you'll stand still, if you'll follow in God's way when he opens it up, if you will trust God, what you'll find is that you can drown your fears and you'll never have to see those fears again. You can drown them because God's going to let the water sweep over them and wash them away. So in our series, we've been looking at the idea of a summary at the end of each one of the lessons. The first thing I want to look at is what is the fear? What is our fear this, this week that we're talking about? And isn't it really personal loss? That's our fear. We're afraid of losing everything. And what's the cause of that? And the cause is that our focus is in the wrong place. Our focus is in the things. Our focus is in ourself, career, can be in, in just a wrong focus even on our family. There's nothing wrong with our families. In fact, families are extremely important, but we can have our focus wrong. And how do we overcome those fears? Well, the, the first thing is, and I, I kind of wrote this with a little bit of a 60s uh, overtone, I guess, if you will, or undertone maybe, 
how do we overcome? Well, we have to peace out going forward. I don't know if you remember that phrase when they used, you know, peace out, man, right? Uh, we have to peace out. We have to trust God. Instead of worrying about our fear, saying, oh, I'd be better off if I went back. We need to say, you know, God will make a way. We've been singing that song uh, recently in worship. You know, God will make a way. He's a way maker. Miracle worker. Well, that's all I need. I just need God to make a way. I just need a miracle, which, you know, a miracle is nothing for God. I just need to trust him. If I trust God, I'm good. And why does it matter that we learn this lesson? Why does it matter that we that we get through this? Well, I'll tell you something. You're never going to get free of your past until you do. Until you learn to trust God, you're never going to be able to trust God. Until you learn to trust God, you're never going to be able to step out of your situation. You're always going to run back to what you know. Even if you know it's wrong, even if you know it doesn't work, it's comfortable. We need to learn to trust God and have, you know what? When you have the peace of God, you're comfortable. When you have the peace of God, you're not wringing your hands and neither is he. When, when you're comfortable in, in God, that's a good thing. And then, just like with the children of Israel, he'll ask you to step out of that comfort zone and trust him a little bit more. Step out of that tr- comfort zone and trust him for, for something more. That's the opportunity to witness. That's the opportunity, whether it's a Facebook post or a text message, a phone call, whatever it might be. Even while we're practicing our social distancing, It's the opportunity to pray with someone, share your testimony. They may ask you, well, how are you so calm through all this? Well, I'm not calm. I have peace. I have the peace of God because I know who's got this all under control. I know who's not stressing about this, and God's got it. Let me share with you how you can have that peace, too. That's an opportunity that we have. I've been trying to write out a prayer for each lesson and the, and the prayer i wrote out for us today is this dear god deliver me from myself my doubt force me to step out into the water with you that i may never be the same again that's what it's all about we're going to drown our fears and we're never going to be the same again because we're going to go through this with God. And that's it for this week. Thank you.